Now you guys know I love trying out new window managers, especially new tiling window managers. And one of the tiling window managers you guys have been recommending that I try is Spectre WM. And I installed Spectre WM on my machine a couple of weeks back, but I'm just now getting a chance to really take a look at it. And I gotta say, Spectre WM is an impressive tiling window manager. So let's take a look at the Spectre WM GitHub page. So their code is hosted over on GitHub. It is a free and open source software project, of course. It is licensed under the ISC license. That is a permissive license similar to the uh, BSD2 license. I'm reading a little bit about Spectre WM here from the README. Spectre WM is a small dynamic tiler and it's a window manager for the X11 windowing system. So a dynamic tiling window manager that would be similar to things like DWM, Awesome, Xmonad, Qtile. Dynamic tiling window managers are in contrast to what I call manual tilers. And manual tilers are window managers like i3, BSPWM. I actually prefer dynamic tilers rather than manual tilers. So Spectre WM seems to be right up my alley. It was largely inspired by both Xmonad and DWM. So DWM is a tiling window manager, dynamic tiler, written in C, which Spectre WM is also written in C. But unlike DWM, the Spectre guys, they're not uh, trying to stick to a strict lines of code limit. They actually have a config file that's easy to edit. You know, they're not restricted by some of the craziness that is the Suckless's DWM. But really, I think the window manager that Spectre WM is most patterned after is Xmonad. I mean, it's almost an exact clone of Xmonad, but these guys mentioned that Xmonad is a great window manager, great defaults, great key bindings, great multi-monitor support, but the problem with Xmonad, in their opinion, was the fact that it was written in Haskell rather than written in C, and these guys are C programmers. So, well, let me take a quick look at my desktop here, and let me show you my Spectre WM desktop. Again, I've only played around with Spectre WM just for the last couple of days. I really only hacked on it for like a couple of hours. And, and, and I got to say, this thing is so easy to work on. You know, it was one of the easiest tiling window managers to get up and running right away. So the first thing you're probably wondering is how to install Spectre WM. Well, let me launch my terminal and zoom in here a little bit. Spectre WM being free and open source software, it probably is in your distro's repositories. It's definitely in the Arch repositories. A sudo pacman dash s spectre wm, hit enter. And I'm not going to reinstall it, so I will cancel that. But once you have spectre wm installed, the next thing you want to do, of course, you log in to spectre wm for the first time. It's going to look slightly different than mine. You will have a bar, but your bar will only have some of the workspace information, which is this first block here. And your bar will also have the time and date. It won't have any of the other. But the next thing you want to know, of course, is where the config file is on the system. The config file should be located at slash etsy slash spectre wm dot conf, I believe. Yeah. So this is the default config file for Spectre WM, but you don't want to play around with the default config file. What you want to do is you want to copy the default config file over to your home directory, so in my case, slash home slash DT, and then you want to call it dot Spectre WM dot conf. So that's very important. You got to name it right. It's in the home directory and it should be dot spectre wm dot conf. I'm not going to copy that over because I already have copied it over and played with it a little bit. I don't want to overwrite my config. So let me open my customized config. So I'm just going to do a vim and then dot spectre wm dot conf. And this thing is so easy to work on because by default, pretty much every option is in the config file already, right? There, there's nothing kind of left out that you have to go searching for. I didn't have to go read documentation 
about anything. This config file it was because it contained everything, every option already, and they, the options are named in such a way you know exactly what each option is. For example, workspace limit. I wanted nine workspaces, you know, one through nine on the keyboard. Seemed like the right thing to do. Window decorations. Now, how wide do you want the border around your windows? What color do you want the border around your windows? What color do you want the focused, maximized window borders to be? Or the unfocused window borders to be? Uh, region padding and tile gap. Of course, I wanted four pixel gaps. And I wanted to enable gaps here just so you guys can actually see that you can do gaps here in Spectre WM. Uh, I set Super Shift C to close the windows. That's, I think, the only key binding that I changed. I think the default uh, key binding to close a window was something weird. I, I want to say it was Super X Mod X to close the window by default. Um, I'm just used to doing Super Shift C um, from other window managers that I've used in the past, so I just always set my key bindings to do that. Scrolling down a little bit, you have this section here talking about the bar. And the bar, of course, is the panel at the top of the screen. Now, with Spectre WM, this could be a negative for some. That bar is not that customizable. It is a very plain bar. Pretty much you're not getting images in that bar. I couldn't even get Unicode characters to display properly in that bar. I didn't try that hard, though. And you can't really do more than one color in the bar. At least I couldn't figure out how to do more than one font color. So, you know, it's a very plain status bar. But I'm okay with that because I'm used to, you know, very simple status bars, you know, like an Xmonad, you know, Xmobar. Xmobar is quite a bit more configurable than this panel, but Xmobar is still a pretty simple panel and I pretty much only do text in my Xmobar anyway. So having a, a very plain status panel, status bar at the top, I'm okay with that. And the very first setting here that I have is bar underscore action. And what is this? Well, bar underscore action is the location of a shell script on your system. You need to write this. This is You're not going to find one, I don't think. There, there may be a default somewhere in Slash Etsy. But what I did is I created my own little shell script to display this information here. Let me do a vertical split here inside Vim here and open up bar action dot sh basically it's just a bash script you see bar action dot sh for specter wm status bar this next line is a comment regarding arch the arch wiki page for scrot wm i've never used scrot wm i don't know why that comment is there uh, because this script was not borrowed from the arch wiki this is actually one of my scripts this is actually the same script that i use for putting information in my DWM stat status bar as well. I, I only made one minor alteration to that script in my DWM status bar script. You have to use X set root to display the information in the panel. You don't have to do that. <laughs> Inspector WM, this is much simpler. You know, I just define these functions like getting uh, the disk space, getting how much RAM I'm using, getting how much CPU I'm using. You define all these functions in your bash script and then at the end, just do a, a, a while loop. So while do echo and then it echoes out all of those functions. Pretty easy. So let me close that vertical split here. Uh, it says, oh, because I wrote something, uh, let me actually save the changes. I forgot I deleted that line in the comments. Reading a little bit more about the config, of course, you can set the color, the background color of the bar. You can also give the bar a border and a border color if you want. Of course, you can set the font. I'm using Mononoke Nerd font size 9 for my panel. You can decide whether you want the bar at the bottom or at the top of the screen. If it bar at bottom is equal to zero, it's at the top. If bar at bottom, I guess, is equal to one, it's probably at the bottom. I'm assuming is how that worked. Bar format. Now, bar format is very important. So there are a few built-in widgets to the bar. And, of course, those are going to include the uh, monitor I'm on, the workspace I'm on, the, the layout that we're in as far as the tiling layout, that's what the part in the brackets here, I know this font is very small, and then www here in parentheses, that is the name of the workspace I'm currently on. All of this is this information right here. And then you notice I have the pipe symbol. The pipe symbol is this pipe here, and then everything after that pipe plus capital A is the action script. That is the bar action script, and that's what's displaying 
the rest of that information. Reading a little further, the clock format. Now this clock format is only for if I included the clock format that was built into the bar. I deleted the, the bars clock because I already have the clock in my bar action script. So this is actually doing nothing for me. If I scroll down a little further, auto run. So auto run, pretty self-explanatory is auto run on workspace one. I want you to launch nitrogen space dash dash restore and I want you to launch Compton. When I first log into Spectre WM, it auto starts nitrogen and Compton. The next section of course is my workspaces. I set nine workspaces and I gave the nine workspaces names. The next setting that's important is the mod key is set to mod four, that's the super key. If you wanted to set it to the alt key, you could do mod key equals mod one. You have a lot of commenting to explain exactly how you should configure things or how you could possibly configure things. Uh, the config file is great. It's well documented. Also, there's a man page for Spectre WM, and it's, it's quite good too. And then the key bindings, and I want to show you. I'm just going to scroll down the key bindings. So look at all of those key bindings, and these were default key bindings. That list right there that I just showed you is all the default key bindings. Pretty much every option that is possible to key bind out of the box with Spectre WM is in the config file, and it's already set to something. So that's a, a really cool thing. Uh, I don't have to wonder about what is possible in Spectre WM because everything that's possible is already in the config file. And again, the functions are really easy to, to figure out what they do. For example, bind bar toggle is set to mod B. So bar toggle, what do you think that does? Well, <laughs> I think it toggles on and off the bar. So mod B, super B, makes the bar disappear. Super B makes the bar come back. Pretty self-explanatory. Bind bar toggle workspace, mod shift B. Now, what do you think that does? Well, it toggles the bar on and off, but it doesn't toggle it on and off on all the workspaces, just the one I'm on. So mod shift B gets rid of the bar on the workspace and the monitor I'm on. I have three monitors though. I still have bars on the other two monitors. But mod shift B again will bring the bar back. Most everything else is pretty self-explanatory. If you've ever used any other tiling window managers, super enter should bring up a terminal and it does. It brings up my terminal. If I super enter a few times just to bring up some more terminals, you will see the default layout. Again, this thing is heavily inspired by DWM and especially Xmonad, the default layouts in DWM and xmonad of course are the master and stack layout and that is what you get here we open up a couple of more windows but there are other layouts because i could do super plus the space bar and i could cycle through other layouts so super and the space bar gets me into this layout it's kind of like a master and stack layout but it is a horizontal master and stack instead of the vertical master and stack I hit super space one more time. I'm in a monocle or full screen or max layout where the windows are all still here, but they all take up the full screen. I could cycle through them, of course, with mod J and K. You know, they're all still here. Mod space gets me to the next layout, which brings me back to the master and stack. So three layouts by default. You have the master and stack, then the horizontal master and stack, and then the monocle layout. If you wanted to get into a floating layout, looking at the key bindings here, bind float toggle. So toggles floating mode on and off is set to mod T. So whatever window has focus, I'm going to focus on this window right here, mod T puts that into a floating layout. Now I could, you know, drag it with the mouse and resize it, do whatever I wanted to do with that window. And when I'm done with it, mod T pushes that thing back into the tiling layout, the master and stack layout. So that's very nicely done. Let me super shift C to close those windows. I'm going to leave two windows open because mod H and L, mod H grows that window and mod L, you know, resizes it the other way, shrinks it. Since I have a three monitor system, uh, one of the cool things that was here by default, although I changed the key binding, there was something in here right here. RG next, region next, and region previous. What this does is I have three monitors. Super plus the period moves to the monitor to the right. Super comma moves to the monitor to the left you know, for previous and next. So that allows me to quickly shift focus between my monitors with just a couple of easy key bindings, super and then either comma or period. I didn't really change much with the default config. I added some of my own custom key bindings at the end here. So launching uh, the terminal, which is 
super enter mod key plus return launches alacrity and it's pretty easy to do your custom key bindings d menu i run with super shift return so pretty easy tiling window manager to get up and running with like straight away this thing was not very hard to get up and running and, and working really easy the default config because it had pretty much everything already in the default config. You could actually install this thing, just copy the default config over to your home directory and just use it out of the box. You really don't have to customize this thing if you don't want to. Overall, I like Spectre WM. It's it's fast. Everything just opens and closes lightning fast. It's as, as fast as any other tiling window manager I've used. It's as fast as DWM. It's as fast as Xmonad. And to be honest, the way I've got it configured already, with just making a few simple tweaks to that config file, I'm happy with it. If I never touch that config file again, I can log into Spectre WM six months from now and immediately get work done in this thing because it, it just works. All the key bindings are kind of what I expect. The defaults kind of make sense to me already. And I am going to leave Spectre WM on my system. I think it's going to be one of those tiling window managers that I push to my GitLab so you guys can see the configs. But I think it's one I'm going to keep on my system and I will log into it occasionally just to live in and play with. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. This show was produced by Michael Mitchell, Chris, DJ Donnie, Dylan, George, Heplo, Nate, LibreQuest, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they are the producers of this show. Without these guys, you guys wouldn't know about Spectre WM. You wouldn't know about it. The show is also brought to you by all these other fine ladies and gentlemen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. You guys sponsored this channel. Without you guys, the show wouldn't be possible. This channel wouldn't be possible. Check out DistroTube over on Patreon if you want to support the channel. All right, guys. Peace.